Welcome to USMLE Sarti. We are committed to empowering IMGs. We're excited to guide you on your match journey. Don't forget to click subscribe and turn on notifications so you can get notified whenever we add new content. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter for the latest tips and tricks regarding everything USMLE. Now, let's dive into it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, today, we have Dr. Lubna Mirza, a very special guest who herself was an IMG, and now uh, she helps a lot of IMGs in terms of rotations and other experiences. So we thought it will be a good idea to sit down with her and uh, pick up uh, some of the tips from her. So welcome, uh, Dr. Mirza. Thank Very you. Very glad to have you. Thank you. Uh, so Dr. Mirza, uh, just give us some idea about your journey as an IMG, the challenges you faced and such. My name is uh, Lubna Mirza. I am an endocrinologist in Norman, Oklahoma. We are south of Oklahoma City. I have been working for Norman Regional Hospital since 2010. After I graduated from the University of Oklahoma with my fellowship in endocrinology, diabetes, and metabolism, I started working here. And I have been here since then. I am an international medical graduate. I graduated from Charnka Medical College in uh, Pakistan. It's it's in Larkana. If some of you are familiar with Benazir Bhutto, she's from Lar she was from Larkana. She I has see. passed away since. But it's located in Sin. And uh, my journey as an IMG is a little different than some of the other IMGs here because I was brought here with my family before I graduated from med school. Uh, when I was a young child, I was six years old and my dad passed away and my mom was very young. She had four kids. So my uncle thought that she and her kids will have a better chance at life if he sponsored us. So that's how we ended up here. When I first arrived to the U.S., I'm the oldest child in my family. So I was already in med school. I had started second year of my medical school. I came here to Oklahoma, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1993. And I checked out the University of Oklahoma, Oklahoma State University, to see how I can transfer from Pakistan med school to America. You know, that naivety in myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I saw the process here and how long it was, and they wanted me to go back and take more courses and do the MCAT. So I decided to go back and complete my medical schooling and then come here and take all the USMLEs. And I was the first doctor in my family, so I didn't have a whole bunch of guidance from my own family. So I have made my own path in a way, and it has been difficult, of course. So that's why I do this. I teach other people. Teaching is very important to me. It, it not only helps other people who are taking the same journey as us, so it's very rewarding, but at the same time, we learn so much from these young people. You know, every time I have a student, they come and teach me stuff that I don't know. I think it's very important to have mentoring at different levels. We should have uh, mentoring with our own colleagues who are at our same level. We can learn from each other, older people and younger people as well. Thank you. No, this was this was very helpful. Now, you, you've seen so many IMGs over the last few years. What are some of the challenges you have seen these IMGs have? Maybe it is the EMR system, maybe cultural uh, what are some of the challenges you see with them? I think uh, no, no two IMGs are the same. They are all from different countries, different backgrounds, and they are facing different challenges. These countries are all different. If you look at South Asia, we grew up uh, with English because it was our second language since we were under British Raj for 100 years. But if you go to South America, nobody speaks English, even though mm -hmm. we are, that is so close to North America. So people are different. And I have had students from multiple countries. I have had students from Mexico, from Russia, from India. And when you and now the world is such a melting pot. When you're talking to a person, they are uh, Chinese descent in South America. So people have, you know, layers of identities and languages. So they all have different challenges. And I try to help them and meet them wherever they are. So some people are fluent in English. Some people may have struggled communicating and then cultural differences. Of course, we come from a society where there's a lot of hierarchy. Like when we were students, we were very afraid to talk to our professors or teachers. We were deathly scared of them. We would stay quiet and just say, yes, sir. Um, yes, madam, whatever you say. 
but that's very different from American culture. So that's what I try to tell my IMG students that you need to speak up. You guys are smart. You are hardworking. You're motivated. You have faced so many challenges in your lives. And, you know, if you look around, other people, our friends, our colleagues, our family uh, members who may have gone into being a teacher or an engineer or a lawyer, they're already done and settled and we are still going. You know, as doctors, we have to go to school for such a long time. And then you're adding more years of education, trying to be a physician in the U.S. So I I look at my every single student and I try to talk to them and see what uh, problems they may be facing. And I try to help them with whatever area they need help with. And also I, I try to make sure that in my class, people are communicating with each other. They're, they're being friendly to each other and they're helping each other fill those gaps. Thank you. So let's now discuss about how you help the IMG, especially in their rotation. So first, let's talk about tele-rotation. There's a lot of myths around that, you know, tele-rotations have lost uh, their importance and, and it's not really useful. So first, tell us how the tele-rotations work and are they really useful in today's day and age post-COVID? I think if there is one thing that came out of COVID is uh, the ability to connect with people from around the world. I took a GCSRT, it's, it's Global Clinical Scholars Research Training Program with Harvard Medical School in 2014. It was a hybrid program. We had some online schooling and we met in Boston a couple of times and one time in London. And we were using the Skype to communicate and making these teams because our classmates were in different countries. They were from 35 different countries. So at the time we were beginning to use the technology and the tools and collaborating on a global scale, which is a little bit before the pandemic. But when the pandemic came around, everything went online uh, for at least some time. And I remember I was on Facebook one time when we spent a lot of time on social media, maybe more than we should, but I saw uh, a company like Sarthi um, that had an ad up and they said, would you like to teach IMGs? And I was immediately interested because I was doing some of that on my own. People were reaching out to me from family, friends, or uh, you know, a child of a colleague or somebody like that. So I signed up with them and they sent me a few students who came and rotated with me in person. March of 2020, I received an email from them and they said, would you do uh, an online rotation? And whenever somebody asks you to do something that you have never done before, I try to do it because that will give you experience. Even if we fail in doing that, at least it will be under our belt. It, at least we will have that experience. So I said, yes, sure, I will, I will explore. And then I had this first student who was living on a, in a small town at the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan. So that was my first student. And only one. And I remember we met through WhatsApp every single day for three months, even though his rotation was one month. But we met for three months every day because I was designing my online rotation. So with his help, and uh, he also wrote a couple of papers, which also published. One of them published in the American Association of Clinical Endocrinology Case Reports. He wrote a very good paper about one of my cases, prolactinoma. So with him, uh, I... I thought about online rotation every day and I reached out to the University of Oklahoma, different departments. I reached out to Baylor University because my mom lives in Wiley, Texas and I go see my mom all the time. So when I pass by Baylor, every time I pass by it, I thought about attending the endocrine grand rounds, but of course we are so busy and how am I going to find time to go to Texas? So I thought everybody is doing these conferences on Zoom. So let me reach out to them. I, I sent program directors my email and I said, I would be very interested in attending your Zoom lectures. So they put me on their email list and now I receive invitations to attend these grand rounds, which have been really wonderful. And I think there is so much that we can do online. In fact, the, it can be more productive than running around and trying to go to a different country and going from city to city. It can be cost, prohibitive for some people. And as you know, even though plane tickets are much cheaper now and maybe you can do Airbnb or 
find somebody to be roommate with, it's still very costly and you have to drive everywhere. America, we are such a car dependent culture. Unless you go to places in like New York where you can take a subway in, um, in South, if you don't have a car, you're paralyzed. You can't go anywhere. I know, I know. I live in uh, Phoenix. Oh, so you okay. cannot do anything without a car. I know. And uh, if you take, you know, as soon as you get out of your home, you, you go to a different city, even to get a cup of coffee, you are basically spending money, you know? Everything costs money. You sneeze and you, you have to pay money for it. So it can uh, cost students thousands of dollars. And of course, we have all been there. And we are reliant on our parents and our families. And even if you try to work and save some money, it's very, very difficult to come up with these thousands of dollars to spend on your rotations. So, I mean, it's valuable, of course. I'm not saying that you should never get out of your, your basement and see the world. Definitely do that. But add some online rotations because you will get the education and more education in those four weeks. Less legwork, less running around. I, I went to OU here. So OU is like a city in itself. When you go to OU, you're so lost. If somebody says, go to this building, Stephenson Cancer Center, or go find the Herald Health Ham Diabetes Center. Where do you get dropped? How do you find them? It, they are so big. So there is so much time that you have uh, wasted getting stressed out and running from place to place and trying to find people. And even when you are uh, rounding with attendings in person, you are doing the HNPs and you're sitting around waiting for your attending to come and then you present. By the time they come after a few hours, you have forgotten your case. And there are grand rounds in person where you can go from one department to the other, walk two miles and go to the other department. But here, if you are in the comfort of your own home, you're, you have family, you're not spending thousands of dollars on transportation, living and your food cost, it adds up. So that can be very helpful. And we cover so much in these four weeks. Uh, it's very, very comprehensive. We start from HIPAA. So the first day in our rotation, we always start with HIPAA. And then I, I have a, um, added everything to my curriculum that I wished I knew before I started my residency that would have made my job, my life so much easier. And when our students take these rotations, they can use these skills and take these uh, learning points and use them while they are doing their training so they can start at a higher level. You know, we when we have to go to the second level or third level, you take one step and then the second step and then the third step. So if they have all the basics covered, they can start at a higher level. Yes. So let, let's talk a bit about uh, how do you structure the rotations you mentioned briefly, but uh, you know, day in the life of an of a intern, whether tele or on-site, what happens? How do they interact? What do they do? Can you give us a brief idea? Yes. So I have some students who come in person and some students are online. And even the students who are here in person are added to the WhatsApp group. So they are keeping up with everything that we are doing online. The people who are here in person, I ask them to come in at nine o'clock in the morning and I make sure that they leave by 3.30 so they don't get stuck in traffic or, or, or lost. I try to make their lives easier. Um, the people who attend online, our class starts at eight o'clock in the morning, every morning, Oklahoma Central Time, and it ends by 1 p.m. after lunch hour. Our clinic is morning and afternoon, so we have two sessions. Between 12 and 1 is our lunch hour. So, uh, Thursday, we start a little bit earlier because the cardiology grand rounds start earlier. So um, in the morning from 8 to 9, there is usually a, either a live activity that they have to attend and listen to, or we I send them a recorded lecture. So for thyroid nodule, which is a very important part of endocrine uh, rotation, when I um, teach them about thyroid nodule, it's a very good lecture about thyroid nodules that I have found on YouTube th that I send to my students and they watch it. It gives them basic uh, information about the ultrasound and how nodules are different from each other and which ones to biopsy, how to follow. So it's either a recorded uh, activity or a live lecture from eight to nine. And then 
after that they have to write what they learned from it not just mm -hmm. repeat what they were told but what is it you process the information this is what i try to teach my students in this rotation that you're not just listening passively and then regurgitating what you heard but i want you to think about what you learned and then what is your take on it add something to it if you have any prior perspective on that point please mention that mm -hmm. so it, it's a thinking exercise and then we meet every day at 10 o'clock i understand some people say this is too much why are we meeting all five days per week i understand uh People are in different countries. Some, some people are traveling. Some may be sick. Some may have things to do. So not everybody is able to attend every day. And we, I have like six students this month. So this is why we have a class every day. So even if we have one or two people missing, they can still learn some during this rotation. So t between 10 and 12, we meet in person. So I'm here with them. And we go through our curriculum. We discuss cases. And we also go over some courses during my rotation. There are a few, two or three important courses that we cover during this class. One of them is the Endocrine Society Comprehensive Diabetes Care Plan. It has 13 modules and it teaches them everything they need to know about diabetes. Today, my students were learning the lifestyle management of diabetes. And they also, one of the students, she was the mock patient. Mm. She, she pretended to be a diabetes case. And uh, everybody had to interview her. And I asked them to do a very, very detailed HRP from chief complaint until their assessment and plan. And then we have a running Google Doc. We have a Google Doc for every month. So this month we have a Google Doc for March of 2024. And I have names of all of my students in there. After each activity, they have to, learn, they have to write what they learned from that activity. And from 12 and 1, they have another either live activity or they have a recorded lecture that they have to listen to. During this rotation, all students have to work on a PowerPoint presentation and present to the class. Okay. They, learn, they learn how to make effective PowerPoint presentations. We It took me a long time to learn that effectively. I learned that in my residency training. Until then, I was using basically the notes. And um, there is a nice uh, TED Talk it's death by PowerPoint. And I ask all of my students to watch it so they know what pitfalls to avoid and how not to make their PowerPoint presentation, how to make sure that their uh, attendees are taking the lessons that they are trying to convey. And then we also learn how to do a journal club. So yesterday we went over a recent article which was published in JAMA that looked at the treatment options for hyperthyroidism and how the surgery in I-131 is superior to antithyroid medication. So they learn how to read journal articles. They We also help them how to write a personal statement. And I encourage my students to start writing their personal statement when they're doing this rotation. I encourage them to speak up and tell us about themselves. We are all smart people. We are, are all doctors and we have studied so much. The hardest thing, it's easy if you ask me. I work here, I have two kids. I I, uh, you know, whatever you want to tell about your academic career, but it's the hardest thing when you ask somebody about their personal statement. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so we teach them how to write their personal statement. I have uh, friends and family and I, I reach out to them. I have a friend who is a police officer. He's into drug abuse in the U S so propofol, how, um, how there is, all this problem with drug abuse. So he'll, they'll come. So I invite people to come and speak to us. Mm. My previous students who have matched into residencies, I asked Dr. Rakesh to come back and tell everybody about his journey, about what he went through and how he overcame problems and found it's his way. So I try to help them with everything they need to know. And I don't think that uh, electronic medical records is any problem at all. I tell them if you guys can use a cell phone, you if you can use any kind of social media platform, once you come wherever you are going to be working, they will teach you about the electronic medical records and you just do it a few times and you learn it. It's just like learning anything else. The main part is understanding medicine, learning medicine, and then where do you find the orders or those are easy things. They will come once you start working. 
So I don't want our students to feel intimidated or, or, or get overwhelmed by it. So um, are the training same for both the on-site students and tele-rotation students, or is there a difference? The, there is only one difference. And that difference is my in-person students are here in person. And I take them with me, especially to the new patients. And mm. I introduce my students and I ask them if they can interview this patient. And if my patient allows to be examined, first I ask permission from all of my patients. Of course, yeah. That is the only difference where the in-person student is able to talk to them in person, face to face and touch them, examine them. That is the only difference. Other than that, they go through the same material. They learn the same things. And of course, if they're here in person, then if we have a conference to go to or or if we are going out for lunch or something, then they are more involved. Like we had a student last month who followed me when I was going to do a talk for PA students. I'm also a clin assistant clinical professor at OU for PA students. So when I was doing a talk there, I asked him if he wanted to come with me. And students are usually happy. They they like to be taken to the university where they can interact with other students and faculty. And they can at least see the university in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be a difference, you know, for a tele-rotation student. But looks like the rotations are very comprehensive and they cover quite a bit. Uh, as we wrap up, what would be your top tips for IMGs, you know, as they start the rotation? What should they, in general, be prepared for? What, what should they be ready for? Just show up and it's, it's a very uh, easy, you just follow, just be present and be interactive, you know, keep your cameras on as much as possible and talk as much as possible. Uh, make friends and do your homework. Even if you are not able to do your homework that day, you can always go back and do your finish your homework. Today, I received two requests for letters of recommendation. And one of the names I, I could not remember. So I went back in their month Google Doc and I noticed that they had not done any homework. So I wrote them back and I said, but you didn't submit any homework. So they wrote me back and they said, um, we had stuff going on and we were not able to do all the homework, but we were there, we were attending. And I said, that's okay, but you still need to go back and finish all the homework because every activity is designed to teach you something. It's not just to get a letter, but these activities are going to help you once you are a resident. Being a resident, being a physician is a very responsible job. And you want to be on top of your stuff. And especially if, let's say, I wrote a letter for somebody. Let's I had you know, Leo working with me. If I say to you, Dr. Pawan, I think you should hire Leo. He's a good doctor. And then you, if you take my word, it the, my word should have some value, right? My, exactly. Yeah. My word should have some value, some uh, some weight or some truth to it. So we, I do want all of my students to succeed, but at the same time, I do expect them to actually put in the work. No, this is actually a very, very important point uh, that you just mentioned, you know, uh, to earn a strong LOR, they actually have to put in work. They cannot just show up and expect a strong, customized, personalized LOR. So, yeah, that I, I think is a point very well taken. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mirza. Any other parting thoughts uh, before we wrap up? Um, no, thank you so much. And um a lot of our students from these rotations, they have done presentations and I have recorded all of them on my Zoom. So if you like for me to share them with you, I'll be happy to share the these. These are nice lectures on endocrine related topics and journal club. Yeah, um, it, it'll be very useful, uh, you know, if you can share them with us. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. And I would be very happy to learn from other attendings if there is something that other teachers are doing that I can incorporate into my classes. I'll be very receptive to it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mirza. We'll do Thank it. you. Nice talking with you. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that video provided valuable insights for your journey. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And check out our website for details on how we can guide you to a successful match.